the righteousness of God that you are, when you develop in that and be established in righteousness, it will protect your heart, your knowing who you are. It will protect that life-giving part of you that's connected to God and help you to stand. The word stand in Ephesians means to make firm or fixed to be established, to sustain the authority or the force of anything. I like that part, to sustain the authority or force of anything. So if I'm standing for my healing, I need righteousness in its place because there are thoughts coming against met my mind, there are, are symptoms, evidences coming in the natural, and I've got to have that supernatural stand of faith that righteousness is a part of. Welcome to Faith Builders. My name is Michelle Steele, and I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to share the Word of God with you today. We are talking about our being in Christ, and we have been in our previous sessions uh, going through a 12-part lesson on In Christ, Volume uh, 1. And so we have covered a lot of ground and we still have more to cover. I want to encourage you to go back and get the whole set, be able to receive from beginning to end all of the teaching that we have available concerning your being in Christ. This is such an um, important revelation for us to grow in. The Bible says that the, the just shall live by faith. Those who are justified, who know they are the righteousness of God and this revealing of our righteousness comes as we grow in faith. And so this uh, teaching is so important that I want to encourage you. The book that we have, I'm holding here in my hand, I'm really excited about it because it's a, a study guide that goes along with the teachings. It uh, corresponds with the teaching. It has all of the points, all of the verses and questions to help you delve a little deeper into this truth. So this is a great tool if you are having a Bible study, if you are in your personal time or even in a family group or a home group uh, with your church having Bible studies, you can use this resource. You can access the DVDs of all of the programs. We have them in DVD, CD, an audio flash drive. Uh, we also have the downloadable MP4 or MP3 version of the broadcast so that you can watch them again, or you can always go straight to YouTube and watch it for free from YouTube. And then we have um, another offer with our Redeemed and Righteous by Nature. This is the book, and this is the study guide that goes with the book. This takes you even into some more details concerning your position in Christ. Uh, I'm able to explain a lot of the details that I was not able to get into in the short time that we have together in our, our program. And so I encourage you, these resources are designed to help you to grow and to be structured in the Word of God. You know, faith builders, the assignment that God has placed in our life is to build people's faith and to frame their world. And that word frame uh, is meaning to provide a structure. And we want to take these resources to provide structure in your life so that you can take the Word of God and put it right to work in your life. If you've never joined forces with us as a partner, I would want to take an opportunity just to share with you how our ministry is changing people's lives. You know, we have our program in English and in Spanish. It's not a dubbed over Spanish version, and that's fine. Many people do that, but God told us to learn, God specifically told me to learn Spanish so that I could preach in Spanish. And we have our program in English and in Spanish going across the United States. And so every time a partner joins their forces with our ministry, you are helping put the gospel in the life of someone else, providing light for them to walk by, 
providing inspiration that gives them hope to reach for God, to accept Jesus as Lord, to walk in the plan of God. You're helping people learn how to live by faith, how to receive by faith, how to, to know who they are in Christ. And you get to receive the benefits of, of just the same benefits that we are receiving. God is, is accounting to your account as well, reckoning to your account that you as a faith builder are helping us do that. We have a gift for you today for all of those who partner with this ministry. It's my first book, and this is the expanded edition, Pressure No Problem. And this is a book that is filled with understanding about how to deal with daily pressures of life, serious, uh, um, heavy pressures of financial pressure, how the Word of God has equipped you to overcome in every area. And it's our gift to you to say thank you for being a partner with this ministry. Today, I want to get into something that I have been uh, uh, preparing for as we have in, gone throughout the previous teachings on our being in Christ. We've talked about being moved from death over into life. We're no longer spiritually dead, sinners by nature, but we have been translated into the kingdom of darkness. We have been moved from we have moved from death to life and we have become partakers with the divine nature in Jesus Christ. The life of God lives in us and now we can live from that life in Christ. This being in Christ is a, a geographical position. The Holy Spirit uses the phrase in Christ more than in Christ, in him, in whom, phrases such as that more than 130 times in the New Testament because the Holy Spirit is identifying what belongs to us. This is such a new new being that we are when we become in Christ, when we become placed in Christ. Everything is so new. It requires the manufacturer's manual to be able to understand what we're capable of accomplishing, what we are, who we are, what we can do. And so this is why we're taking 12 weeks to know who we are in Christ. And this is just volume one. We've got volume two to come to talk about more of the benefits of being in Christ. When we look at this, we begin to recognize one of the main components of, of our being in Christ is that we've been made righteous. It, righteousness is not something we have. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he became sin so that we would be made righteous. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, Of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. And it goes on to say sanctification and redemption. He has made us righteous. It says in Romans 4.25 that he was raised for our justification. And that word justification is another word that means declared to be righteous. Romans 3.25 says God set forth Jesus to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. And that word propitiation is one I've never used outside of the Bible. <laughs> it is a Bible word for sure, but it means he was the payment. He was the one who uh, obtained that righteousness for us. And it goes on to say in Romans 3.25 to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, verse 26, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. Jesus is our justifier. Isaiah 53, 11 says, God shall see the travail of Jesus' soul, of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, by the knowledge of Jesus Christ, shall my righteous servant, Jesus Christ, justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus has been made righteousness to us. So he's done everything to make us righteous. And we've got to submit to that righteousness. Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's sin, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Adam's disobedience caused everyone to be born in that position of spiritual death and sin by nature. 
but by one man's obedience, the obedience of Christ, shall many be made righteous. Made righteous. So righteousness is not something we have. It is who we are. We are made in right standing with God in Christ. In Christ is the key. He's the one who has done it because we are in him through the decision to make him our Lord and Savior. We have been made righteous. So this right standing, we need to give it a place of honor in our life. We need to yield to that right standing. We need to submit to that right standing. We need to awaken to that right standing. So that word submit to right standing, that phrase is used in Romans chapter 10, verse 3. They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. It was speaking of the, the Jewish people that he was writing about and that they were trying to do it by the law. And he said they did not establish uh, the righteousness of God by submitting to it. So the righteousness of God that we are in Christ, we have to submit to that. And one of the ways that we submit to that is we do what righteousness tells us. Romans chapter 10 says this in verse 8, But what saith it? The righteousness which is of faith. What does the righteousness which is of faith say? It says, the word is nigh you and in your, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. But then we also, we say what righteousness tells us to say, but we don't say what it tells us not to say. In Romans 10, 6, it says, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in your heart. So it tells us that we should not be thinking or saying certain things. So the righteousness of God who I am is going to be a direction provider for me, going to direct me in how to talk in line with the will of God, how to, because I'm the righteousness of God. And because I know I'm the righteousness of God, I'm not going to say, oh, if only Jesus were here, it would be different. No, I'm going to say, Jesus has given me his word. So if I've got his word, I've got him. He's on the scene. I'm going to put his word on it. and I'll put Jesus in that situation. And so righteousness helps us to know that. The righteousness we are in Christ helps us to know that. That's part of yielding to this righteousness and submitting to it in our life. And so based on these scriptures in Romans chapter 10, we find out that if I yield to righteousness, it is going to direct my mouth in line with God's word. And it's going to direct my believing as well. Uh, the breastplate of righteousness is a necessary part of standing in victory. Ephesians chapter 6 says that we stand therefore, verse 14, having our loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. There are others included in that. Uh, we know in the armor of God, the other, other parts of the armor, but we, we know that righteousness being the breastplate covers the internal organs in the natural, a breastplate of an, a soldier, the Roman soldier that Paul was referring to when he's using that illustration in Ephesians is covering the heart, covering the, the vital organs and the righteousness of God that you are when you develop in that and be established in righteousness, it will protect your heart. You're knowing who you are. It will protect that life-giving part of you that's connected to God and help you to stand. The word stand in Ephesians means to make firm or fixed, to be established, to sustain the authority or the force of anything. I like that part, to sustain the authority or force of anything. So if I'm standing for my healing, I need righteousness in its place because there are thoughts coming against my mind. There are, are symptoms, evidences coming in the natural, and I've got to have that supernatural stand of faith that righteousness is a part of. So we know from Isaiah 54 verse 14 that righteousness is something we are to be established in our life. It says, in righteousness shall you be established. You will be far from oppression for it shall, for you shall not fear and from terror for it shall not come near you. 
So the righteousness of God will be visible in our life as, as we establish in this righteousness, we're going to recognize that I don't have fear operating in my life. I don't have terror operating in my life. I am in this righteousness established. When we look at scripture, I think it's interesting that it also refers to righteousness being visible as a brightness. Not only are you going to see the effect of the righteousness in, in that uh, protection from peace and from terror and from oppression, but we're also going to see it as something that causes the shining forth of God's, God's life in me. Isaiah 62 verses 1 and 2 it says uh, that it is a brightness. It refers to it as a brightness. It said, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness therefore or thereof go forth as brightness. Righteousness going forth as a brightness. And that's what the, the we're talking now about the, my lifestyle now that I've got it established in me, now that I'm worked, I've worked that faith in my heart that I am the righteousness, how are people going to see it? How is it going to be evident in, in my life so that other people see God in me through that righteousness? He says it's like a brightness, but that's not the only place I see that. Malachi 4.2 says it this way, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. It causes it refers to and calls righteousness this, and we know it's referring to Jesus, the, to you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, and that's a, a son as in S-U-N in the King James, but it's referring to Jesus living in us, arising with healing in his wings, and you will go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You're going to live out of that righteousness that is flowing from your relationship with Jesus. Matthew 13, 43 is very plain in this illustration. It says, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Praise God. That's what we want. We want to have a lifestyle of righteousness that people can see. I'm walking with God. I'm the righteousness of God, not for the purpose of, you know, look at me, but for the purpose of look at God. <laughs> I want you to see God in me. I want you to see how he has freed me from fear. I want you to see how he has restored my life and, and how the effect of righteousness has caused peace in my life. So we are designed, believers are designed to be doers of righteousness. 1 John 2, 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. Everyone that is born of him is doing righteousness. Everyone that does righteousness is born of him. So because I'm born of him, I'm going to have acts of righteousness. I, my lifestyle and behavior will be in line with who I believe I am in Christ, the righteousness of God. Isaiah 64 says in verse five that God meets those who work righteousness. He meets those that rejoice and work righteousness. So that means God comes out to meet you. You know, you're, you're on your way to see him, but he's on, he sees you coming and he's on his way to meet you. Why? Because you are one who works righteous works. And we've got to guard that righteousness that lifestyle of righteousness. We, when we know we're the righteousness of God, we're going to set up those safeguards. You know, the, the Bible speaks in Psalm chapter one of a congregation of righteousness. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna read the whole text of that chapter, but I wanna read this phrase from verse six. It says, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners won't stand in the congregation of the righteous. We have a congregation. We're, con we're, we're gathering together. It's not just talking about the, the local church gathering. It's talking about the believers in Christ all throughout the, the world. We are the congregation of the righteous. And so we have that, that position, this gathering, and it says that sinners will not stand 
in that. Well, we've got to guard. If you read the previous text, it tells us that we don't walk in the way of sinners. We don't stand in the, in, in the same uh, place. We, we've got a different lifestyle. We don't walk in the way of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. But we're in the congregation of the righteous. So there are actions that we're not participating in. You know, when you look at Lot, when he, he, the Bible, this really shocked me. I have to tell you, when I first got saved and was learning about the, the Bible and, and learning, you know, I, I just had that category, sinner saved, sinner saved. And it, and I just, I, I would have put Lot, I don't know that I would have put him in the right category if I had not had the scriptures, but I read this and it shocked me. It said that Peter, that, that in first Peter, I'm sorry, second Peter chapter two, it says, uh, concerning Lot, uh, it's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. It said that uh, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an, an example unto those that should live ungodly. Now, this is what we're talking about. I have a lifestyle of righteousness. He said that Sodom and Gomorrah was an example for those who live ungodly. And they delivered just Lot. Lot is just what? It called him righteous Lot. They, they delivered Lot, who the Bible calls him just or righteous, but he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So we've got to guard the righteousness that we are because it's possible for us to take being the righteousness of God, but to put ourselves in situations where we vex our own soul because of allowing what we don't want to be seeing, what we don't want to be hearing, what they're doing that is sinful, ungodly living to be to putting ourselves in the position of, of, of watching it and condoning it. You can even see that he was, he was trying to compromise with it. The Amplified says in the verse seven, he was greatly worn out and distressed. He vexed his own soul, King James. He was greatly worn out and distressed. So that's why we've got to guard this righteousness that we are, not wear ourselves out, trying to continually put ourselves in the wrong position to be, uh, to, to, to have to uh, be, um, oh, I'm, the word that I'm looking for, to be in that position to have to watch it and see it. You know, the Bible says there's a reward for righteousness and a reward for unrighteousness. In that same chapter, in 2 Peter chapter 2, it went on to talk about the reward for unrighteousness. It says, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be, uh, uh, to be punished. It goes on in that same chapter and it says, they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. They're going to receive a reward of unrighteousness, but we are going to receive a reward of righteousness. And I want to just list some of these rewards to you. Uh, these rewards of righteousness are, come to us, first of all, because we choose to yield to righteousness. Romans 6, 13 says, yield yourself unto God as those who are alive from the dead and yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The rewards of righteousness include, this is not a full list, but we're going to just touch, touch them, uh, uh, a few of them. Number one, blessing in our homes. Proverbs 3.33 says he blesses the habitation of the just. Increase light on our path. Proverbs 4.18, the path of the just is as a shining light. Blessing on our heads. Proverbs 10.6 says blessings are upon the head of the just. Our desires will be granted, Proverbs 10, 24. The fear of the wicked, it will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. We will flourish supernaturally, Proverbs eleven twenty eight. 28. He that trusts in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Proverbs 12, 13 says we will have divine stability. The righteous shall not be moved. We have divine protection. Proverbs 12, 21, that there shall no evil happen to the just. 
And then Proverbs 15, 6 says that we will have wealth in our homes. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. We have rewards for righteousness. God wants to reward. Those are not only what we, what we, the benefits, the fruits of our righteousness in answered prayer, but he wants to reward us with these fruits of righteousness in our life of his protection and his provision and his blessing, having a full manifestation. That's why we want to live from our place in Christ. This is such an important teaching. I, I thank you for being a part with me today. Praise God. Remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The Bible uses this phrase, in Christ, to reveal the position of the believer. Through the light of the scriptures, we can see the full picture of who we are in Christ. The series, In Christ Volume 1, is exactly what you need to shine the light on the position you have as a believer in Christ Jesus. In this series, Michelle Steele explains what it means to abide in Christ, the process of maturity, how Jesus is our justifier, the victory that he gives us, and much more. This insightful 12-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, we are offering Michelle's companion book, Redeemed and Righteous by Nature, and the companion workbook. In this book, Michelle describes the righteousness of God we have been made in Christ Jesus that enables us to approach our Heavenly Father with confidence. As you develop in your right standing with God, you can experience fruit in your prayer life and walk and exercise authority over the enemy. If you desire to experience the fullness of who you are in Christ, this book is for you. The workbook is a great addition that can be used for personal study or small groups. This essential book about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus can be yours for just $15. Add the workbook for just $10 and you will be prepared to enter into a solid foundation of your position in Christ. Don't miss this special offer. The 12 part series In Christ Volume 1 and the companion book Redeemed and Righteous by Nature working together to shine the light on your position in Christ. Call the number on your screen or go to buildfaith.net to order. Call or go online now. We want to say thank you for watching Faith Builders and would like to invite you to become a partner with this ministry. With your partnership, you help make it possible for the Word of God to be spread across the world. You can call us at 1-586-5080 or visit us online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242-692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Together, we are building people's faith and framing their world by the Word of God. Join us at buildfaith.net for faith-building teaching and live services from your computer, phone, or tablet. You can also watch live services on Sundays, Wednesdays, and special events.